Hello, I'm Danielle Reese, and on June the 1st, 2011, my family and I attended a Cincinnati Opera and the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden presentation, Back to the Zoo. It was wonderful. We enjoyed musical performances of outstanding artists and a showcase of a few of the zoo animals. Let's take a look. experience for to have the, the opera invite us down and a great experience for Eric so thanks we were embraced by solos duets and quintets performing musical pieces of Puccini Mozart and Gershwin just to name a few This event also gave the audience an opportunity to see some exciting animals. But what we are really amazed by, of course, is the flight of birds. These are roller pigeons that star every day in our Wings of Wonder Bird Show. They fly here from the amphitheater. And you'll see they even do some tricky rolls as they're in midair. They have a two and a half foot long prehensile or grasping tail. So they can use that either to hold on to Eddie's shoulder or to hold on like a safety rope when they're up in trees. They are twice the weight of a bald eagle. And frankly, they are a salmon's worst nightmare. They, they live on the coast of Siberia and principally do hunt salmon that go in the run on the North Pacific. <laughs> In addition to capturing some of the event, my husband Greg was able to speak with the Harry T. Wilkes Artistic Director of Cincinnati Opera, Mr. Evans Mirages. Let's listen. Cincinnati Opera started at the Cincinnati Zoo, believe it or not, in 1920. We didn't have anything like the Metropolitan Opera House in Cincinnati in those days. But a lot of citizens wanted this beautiful combination of beautiful surroundings and beautiful music. So we came out here, started performing in what was essentially a band shell with a pavilion over it. And we did that from 1920 to 1971. So we had 50 years and then some playing grand opera in a beautiful outdoor setting. What we decided to do since 1971, Cincinnati Opera has been in the glorious Music Hall in downtown Cincinnati, which is a proper opera house, air conditioned and all the modern amenities. But there's such an affection in Cincinnati for the remembrance of the zoo days, as they're called. All those years of people performing here and singers sweating like you can't believe because they were wearing 50 pounds of costumes in 90 degree weather. No matter, they came for the love of the music. So we decided on our 90th anniversary last year to do a Return to the Zoo concert. It was so popular, we came back tonight to do a concert to herald our 91st season. So. Our pavilion doesn't exist anymore, but there's a wonderful theater here called the Wings of Wonder. It's an amphitheater, and we had a sellout crowd tonight, over a thousand people. I think one of the things that's beautiful about opera, whether it's here in Cincinnati or at the Met or in London or wherever you see opera, is that opera is all about our lives. It may be kings and queens and ancient gods and goddesses, but they all have marriage problems. They all have problems with their kids. They all have problems with growing old. They have all problems with love most of the time. And it is one of the most beautiful things to watch these emotions that you and I have made so much bigger and perhaps more understandable because they're writ large. So I am such a fan of introducing people to opera for the first time because you don't need an education to understand and appreciate opera. You don't need a book learning about music or anything. You just have to come with your heart. And I guarantee you that if you give opera a chance, you will fall in love with it. Yeah. 